The electric force is a field force. What that means is that you don't have to actually be in contact with something to experience the force. Just like with gravity, you don't have to actually be in contact with anything to feel the effects of the gravitational force. You have the gravitational field that is actually acting on you as a manifestation with the, the gravitational force. The force does the acting, a field is a representation of that force. And I like to say that the field is the environment created by something that is generating a force. So, for the Earth, for example, we're talking about the gravitational field. If you know that here's the Earth, and you're out in space, and you have a little meteorite somewhere, you know which way it's going to go. It's going to be attracted to the Earth. So you would draw your force like this. Or if it were over here, you'd draw your force like this, etc., etc. The force would be directed towards the center of the Earth, which is generating the gravitational force that the meteorite experiences. Of course, the meteorite is, is generating gravitational force that the Earth experiences too, but we're drawing things as from the perspective of being generated by the Earth in this picture. So it would be spherically symmetric in this way. So you would know, based on what we talked about with gravitational stuff, that wherever you put this meteorite, you would know where it would go. It would be attracted towards the center, it would move on that line. The field, the gravitational field, will be represented as the collection of all of these lines. That basically says, if I put something with mass in any given area around the Earth, what would it do? And you would know the behavior based on where those arrows are pointing and what the field is actually doing. If you put it out here, you know it's going to be going in. If you put it in here, you know it's going to be going in. You also know, based on the density of the lines, how strong your force is at different places. So if you're, say, in here, and you take this area as the area you're considering, there are more field lines than if you're out here. Which means, as we know, the gravitational force is weaker as you go further away and stronger as you go closer in. The same thing can be applied to the electric force. We can talk about the environment created by some particle with charge that will therefore then affect any charge that you put in that environment. And we usually talk about the force exerted on some positive test charge that you would put somewhere. And then you divide out that test charge to get out what the electric field is. So that the electric field, as a number, as an equation, as a mathematical concept, would be the force divided by that positive test charge. Okay. Which then generalizes to say that the force that, you would, that some particle would experience is equal to its charge times the electric field that it's set in. So the environment created. If you have a charge uh, set up of, say, three or four charges, which we'll call charge B as a collective thing, okay? and you want to know what happens to charge A if you put it in that field from charge B, well, the force that A feels from B is A's charge times the electric field created by that collection of stuff that we're calling B. Okay? So if we have two particles that obey a Coulomb's law of force, where F is equal to K E Q1 Q2 over R squared, where K is that constant of 8.99 times 10 to the positive 9 Newton meters squared per Coulomb squared, and you're looking at these two particles, Q1 and Q2, and you want to know the force that is being acted on Q1 by Q2. You can write that in terms of Q2's electric field, or the environment that it's creating, by saying that F is equal to Q1 times E 
2, if you want to call it that as a subscript for 2, or that therefore E2 must be the F divided by Q1, so that you end up with KEQ2 over R squared. This would be the electric field that Q1 would experience at some distance r from Q2. And you would figure out the actual force that it experiences by multiplying back by the Q1. So you have some charge that sets up an electric field. It creates an environment around it that if you put some charge near it or in that environment would experience a force of this type where force equals Q times the electric field. And we represent this electric field by drawing electric field lines. Okay. So we can talk about what happens for a positive charge and for a negative charge. A rule is that the electric field will point in the direction where a positive charge would be going, or it would point in the direction where the positive charge would feel that force. So a positive charge would be repelled by this force right here, generated by this positive charge. So the electric field would be directed radially out from this positive charge. And we draw the arrows in the direction that a positive test charge would go. For a negative charge, you'd have the opposite situation. the arrows would point towards the positive charge as opposed to the negative charge. We're pretending these aren't right next to each other, they're just in different situations. They're separated. Okay. But if they have, a, a rule for drawing electric field lines, by the way, is that you have to have the lines be proportional to the charges that are involved. So if this charge is plus one Q, or plus one, the fundamental unit of charge that an electron has, and this one is minus the fundamental unit of charge, they're going to have the same number of field lines. If you double the charge on this one, it has to have double the field lines of this one. So let's do that. Let's add eight more lines. Now we've represented the fact that this one is plus 2q, and this one is minus 1q. So that this has some charge, and this has twice the charge. So it's got twice the field lines or the field that you would experience is twice as big, the force you would experience is therefore also twice as big as you would over there. Okay. So the field lines are going to be a very essential mapping tool in order to represent the electric field and know what would happen to a particle if you put it in that environment. So this really is a map of the environment created by the charges themselves. Okay. So if you had two negative charges, okay, and I'm not saying they're separate, they actually are next to each other, what we would usually expect is that you had that radial situation, but you have to worry about the addition of the two electric field vectors on the inside and actually everywhere in space. Because electric field is a vector, you have to worry about the components, you have to worry about adding up those things. We can use the superposition principle to just actually lay one on top of the other, but we can use the field lines to represent that. So what you actually end up with is this sort of situation. Where again, we still have the arrows that are always pointing towards the negative, or they point away from the positive, but since these are negative, they're pointing away. I mean, since they're negative, they're pointing towards, I realize it's just that they're pointing away. They're negative, so they're pointing towards that. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We'll leave that at 7 for both of them. As long as they have equal numbers, since they're equal charges, that's going to be fine for the number of of field lines, and the electric field, by the way, at any given point here is tangent to a field line. So for a straight line, the tangent line is right on top of it. 
for a curved line like this, the electric field would point this way at this point, it would point this way at this point, it would point here at this point for any given point. It's always going to be tangent to the field line. So the field line draws the contour corresponding to all those electric field lines together. Okay. Notice there's a lack of field right here at the center. That's because there is not going to be an electric field at the center. You can think about this in terms of force. If you had a positive charge right here in the very center, it's going to feel the same attraction from this as it will from this. And so the overall force it will feel is zero. Which means that the overall electric field, the environment that would push or pull that, would have to be zero because it's not going to be pushed or pulled in any direction. Okay. But it's going to be very strongly um, either attracted or repelled based on other places that you put it in here, based on the collection of the lines. Okay. So again, the arrows will correspond to the direction that a positive particle will go. A negative particle would go the opposite direction. Obviously, a negative particle would not want to be anywhere near these two negative particles. Okay. But this field representation is a very important concept to understand, and it, it was not as relevant for the gravitational stuff that we were dealing with. It is for other parts of gravitation, but not so much for the stuff that we were dealing with. That's why we didn't talk about it as a field then. But it's directly analogous to stuff with a gravitational force. Uh, this electric stuff is directly analogous to the gravitational force. And you really should think of the electric field as the environment that some set of charges is creating. And then if you bring in some other charge, it will feel the force that's set up by those charges that are in there that correspond to the mapping of the electric field. And we'll, we'll talk more next time about how that, what that corresponds to with potential energy and also electric potential.